Hello everybody and welcome to Medieval Engineers with me, Ling Game, where today I'm going to be talking about wind power in Medieval Engineers. And where does wind power come in useful? Well, wind power allows you to automate resource refinement. And by that I mean I can take for instance this sawmill and turn wood logs into either planks directly or first timber. Now I'm not going to focus so much on the different things you can do with this, but the important bit to remember is that with these, uh, either the sawmill or the grinding stone or whatever, it becomes a lot more efficient. So if you were to turn a log into timber by hand, it will only yield you three timber. If you do it with a workbench, it's four. If you do it with one of these, it is six. Similar uh, bonuses translate across all these machines that you, that you can hook up to the windmill. Now please note, as you might have already noticed, that depending on what kind of situation you are in, this windmill will turn at different speeds. Uh, keep that in mind, but first I'm going to give a little bit of a demonstration on how to build these. So, I'm going to put up the hut now. I'm going to uh, place down another sawmill. Note that there's this little square block on the end. That's where you attach the mechanical bits. Right, so first of all, we're going to turn it up with this mechanical joint. Then, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to split it. Let us see. Using one of these. Now you can see it will split it down and to the side. Now, on the front of this, I'm going to stick a windmill if it will let me. Nope, not, uh, not far enough off the ground. We'll have to place it slightly further up. For which we will use one of these. Now, in this testing world, I, I'm, um, I've made a conscious decision not to put structural integrity on here for demonstration purposes. Um, of course, if you were to build this in a real world, it will need to be a little bit more complicated. Now, this mill is turning nicely. And one thing I would like to add here, if I were to, for instance, on the back of this, where we added the splitter, add more mechanical parts, slowly but steadily, hang on, the windmill will start slowing down as well. Until eventually, if I add enough bits at the back, it will stop entirely. This is also the reason I chose not to add any structural integrity in this uh, particular world, so I can very easily demonstrate this to you. Right. Now, what's the fun about all of this? Well, first of all, you can break this rather nicely. But uh, let me demonstrate with this model over here. Note the turning speed, and that already one of the saw blades is functional. As you can see, it's moving up and down rather nicely. If I were to add a second one, if it will let me, the turning speed of the windmill slows down a lot, but it's still moving, and both the bottom and the top one are currently working. Now what the nice part is, and this is something I'm seeing a lot on the internet, this is a misconception, the turning speed of this windmill does not affect the speed of processing logs. So what that means is, no matter how slowly this turns, no matter how slowly these blades move up and down in this animation, it will always turn, one of these sawmills will always turn a log into timber in roughly 2.6 seconds. I've done a lot of testing on this and it works. Uh, if you don't believe me, you're of course free to test. But what the nice bit is, because I now have two sawmills, I could hypothetically process wood twice as fast as I would if I only added one. As a second bit of a bonus, I could choose to use the top one only for planks and the bottom one only for uh, timber. So uh, it gives you options, so to say. Now say you're only interested in turning one thing into another, so for instance you're only interested in logs, then don't bother making anything complicated. As soon as that windmill turns, you're, you're just set. Um, more uh, faster turning windmills will allow you to build larger contraptions. For instance, this one on top is turning a lot quicker. What that means for us is, even if we add this second construction here, it doesn't really slow them down all that much. So what this will allow us to do is make our contraptions far, far bigger than they otherwise would have been. Let's see if we can uh, expand this ever so slightly. Now we're going to do this the lazy way. So, um, using the, the, the stuff I have on my hotkey. You could do this a lot more efficiently if you wanted to. Um, I'm not one for efficiency, so there's that. I'm basically uh, too lazy to um, adapt anything on my hotbar right now. 
Anyway, this should be a nice demonstration. Now I've got three of them hooked up and it's still turning at roughly the same rate as the one down there. So what we can tell from this is that increasing the height of the windmill opposed to the ground will actually increase the rotational speed and therefore the amount of sawmills or therefore any kind of processing material that could be your grinding stone or whatever that you can hook up to one single mill. This will also mean that I, that I can add more mechanical parts to this. Therefore I could make a long long chain of these one wide uh, mechanical shafts on top of this and uh, some testing has shown that the room you make it or the, the amount you make it taller is uh, the power that gains outweighs the amount of shafts it would take to make it bigger so in other words making a very very tall windmill will actually give you benefits even if you take that power all the way down to the ground anyway um, moving on swiftly um, as I mentioned these uh, mechanical blocks the further they are off the ground, the more power they will generate. So the more equipment you can stick on the back of one of these windmills. And I do mean off the ground. I don't actually mean the amount of blocks you've built it up. So if I were to build on the side of a cliff, for instance, up here, it would turn a lot quicker than it does just on here. Because it has a lot more blocks before it hits solid ground. Therefore, building on the side of a cliff will effectively give you the same effect as just building a very big tower and on top of that building your windmill. There's some something to be gained over here. Um, a nice demonstration for that is we've got a well, relatively small bit of the ground here. As you can see, if we move over to the side, the very same structure of the ground a lot more is turning a lot faster. Now if I were to build it off the side of the cliff, let's let's do this real quickly together so you know what I'm talking about. Now this is not really on a lot of blocks, so keep that in mind. Now we're just going to build the exact same structure as you saw down there. I'm going to need a different block. There we go. And number four. Note that this turns very, very quickly, even though it's only on one block of stone. When we go looking over here, this is also on one block of stone, but it's barely turning at all. Whereas this stone, this bugger here, is on four or five blocks of stone. Whilst that one is still turning faster than this. So as you can see, the relative factor here is height of the ground, not necessarily the height of the structure you build it on. And this is something you can exploit when building these. So, uh, I hope all this information helped a bit. You can make these as complicated as you like. I've put a little bit of demonstration here. This windmill is now powering nothing. If I turn the switch, which you can do with these mechanical parts. Oh, hold on. When I turn the switch, th these two are running. I can add one more. There we go. Now there's three turning. If I were to try and add one more, the windmill stops entirely. If I disengage it again, it's turning again. So basically you can make this as complicated or as simple as you'd like. This isn't even that far off the ground, so you can imagine the possibilities building a large setup with a lot of switches. Um, allowing you to process whatever you like, whenever you like. Hope this information helped you. If it did, let me know. If you want to know anything more about these mechanical blocks, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. And um, yeah, I'll see you for the next one.